Good morning, everyone, or good evening, good night, good wherever in the world you may be. Hello, Angie, my darling. Hello, Renee. Hello, Terrilyn. How are we on this fine, fine day? Hello, Evelyn. How are you? All right, it's a little bit glary only because it's the front of the book and it's quite glary. Um, go, hello, Lynn. How's it going? I'm going to be working in Aikiko's Japanese Girls, but I'm going to open it up so the glare's not there. And then I will work on my light so it's quite not so glary for the people. Hold on. Getting everything set on up in this world of bookiness so that we're doing it. You slept about 11 hours. That is fantastic. Actually, I slept really well last night too. Um, it's nice and cold here at the moment, so layered blankets and it's heavy and you just kind of like oh, curl in underneath it. And I was like, oh, slept quite well. I'm dressed and ready to go because I've got to go to rehearsal straight after this. So I'm like, I'm actually half human this morning. I'm not sitting here in my pyjamas like I normally am. So I'm actually alive and functioning. All right, we're going to be doing, this is actually, I didn't even realise, um, but it's the cover image. So there you go. That's cover image of the book. Um, I was, <laughs> yeah, that was good. It was actually really nice to sit there and talk to you, Evelyn, while I, we were just colouring away, having a chat. It was it was really good. Um, thank you, Angie. The um, I couldn't choose what image I wanted to do in this book. I was like, oh, which one do I do? And um, and I knew Jamie had this book, so I messaged her and said, "Pick a page," and she did. So that was that was good. Hey, Ezra, how are you? So yeah, today will be you know we won't be going three and a half hours in this stream today. Let's put it that way. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to work with um, Lumi's on the skin, and then go into um, Polly for the rest of it. Um, I just don't like, I know, but polys aren't my favourite to use for skin, so I'm kind of like, don't want to do it. Uh, look, Angie's already on with the, the links. So I'm actually going to do um, her in Mako style. So as we're going through and getting started with it all, I'm actually going to do Mako style with her and um, be using that as my base for what I plan to do. Uh, oh, I've got to remember my loomies don't fit in this sharpener. I've got to pull out the other sharpener that requires me having hand strength. That is because, yes, Angie is awesome. I know. She's pretty, pretty wicked. I am. Um... All right. So, got light flesh. While we're waiting for everyone to come in, I'm just going to start basing everything with light flesh to begin with. Just a light layer. Just so I've got some pigment down on the page. So, nothing too exciting. Hey, Mona. Mona, Mona, hey, Mona, mm, Mona. And all the, all, all the Aussies will be like, we know that song. Hey, Mona, Ooh, Mona. So how's everyone's Saturday been? A lot of you, it's Saturday evening. For me, it's cold Sunday morning. It's a cold Sunday morning. Well, for me, it's cold. It's about seven degrees Celsius. So nothing 
too crazy. But my hands are cold. You're still colouring tree limbs. Fun. I've got to go. I will go back, as you know. I will. I always go back and replay your um, your stream. But that will be this afternoon when I get home and need to relax after dancing and singing all day. And I've got to make some props while I'm there, while they're working through some scenes that I'm not in. I'll be making some props. I've got my handy dandy Stanley knife and hot glue gun all ready to go. Hey, Jamie, I was just talking about you that you picked this page for me because I couldn't make a decision because I'm indecisive. A medium pizza, nice. Leftover cheese, yep. I actually like, I love the cheese that sticks in the box of a pizza and you like peel it off and it's like, mm, cheese. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, uh, yeah, Azra, me too. When a page doesn't work out, you kind of just sit there and go, oh. What have I done? Oh, on that, I'll show you while everyone's coming in. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. The oil pastel one from the other night. Here she be. She be done. And if I go that way, you'll see more of the shimmer. I'm like, she worked out. I was like, look at her go. That was a bit of fun. But, um. Yes, has she slept? Greater pump. Oh, yum. That is the ultimate question. Has Jamie had some sleep? Good. Six hours is, is better than the one hour the night before. So this is only a base layer. I'm not trying to make it look pretty at this point in time. It's just a base layer for something to have, be on the page for everything else to go on. So I'm using light flesh, if I didn't say that. We'll nap again later. Oh, I wish I could nap again later. No, I've got to go human. <sighs> Humaning really is not fun. Just, you know. No, okay. So you've got a light lay down. Like legit light. You probably can't even see it. I'll come in a little bit closer. Um, not very much at all. Because I've got to go in and we're going to do this traditional Mako style. Hello, Kelly. Good evening. Oh, yeah. Two weeks left. Oh, not fun. All right, I'm going to come in with white. And we're going, I'm just, I don't, probably won't even be able to see where I'm putting this down. But um, I'm going to start outlining because we're going to do uh, traditional Mako style makeup actually no what i'm going to come in and do is use it with this light flesh so i can actually see what i'm doing so, and when i'm coloring it i will explain to you mako style makeup um and what the different makeup colors mean Sorry, actually half concentrating. Okay, cool bananas. All right. Okay, I'm going to come in with that light for the lash now while I've got it back out, and I'm going to do her hairline a little bit 
darker now that I've got her mapped out. So Mako in Japanese means dancing child. And Mako are basically apprentice geisha. So traditionally you could um, start your apprenticeship like about the age of seven, like you know, hundreds of years ago. But nowadays in Japan, if you want to become geisha, um, you start after you've done your junior high school. So generally about 14, 15 is when you start your Mako apprenticeship. Oh, pencils are down. Oh, woo, pencils are down. She's serious about the chat. Yeah, so Mako, Mako girls now are uh, about uh, from the age of 15 to 20 because 20 is the age in Japan where you are considered an adult. So you go and um, that's your coming of age birthday is when you turn 20. So until then, you are a child. So Mako is... Dancing child. Um, and then if you are successful with your apprenticeship, it might you might not be ready at 20. You might have to continue your apprenticeship for a little bit longer. But if you are ready at 20, you become geisha. And geisha means person of the arts so a lot of people have the idea that geisha are courtesans you know so that they're paid to provide physical services they are in fact not that is a different um, thing geisha are employed to be entertainment um, so while the mako are doing their apprenticeship I'm just going to come in with, uh, what colour do I want to use? I'm going to stick quite with the yellow um, based colours because Asian skin has a quite a yellow undertone. Hey, Sue, how are you doing? I'm like, hey, Sue, ooh, Sue. So this is um, brown ochre, ten percent. Um, what was I talking about? Yes. So during the during the Mako apprenticeship, they live in the Okia, which is the um, mother's house, not the their mother mother, but the their um, their group's house. So generally, quite a few Mako and Geisha live in the same house um the old geishas end up having their own accommodation but <clears throat> and the mother is called so okia means wolf place and the mother is called okami-san which means wolf person which makes a lot of sense because it's the the mother's job the leader of the pack um, she's basically the leader of the pack so she's the the um the head wolf. So they go off and they move into the Okia, so place of the wolf, and um, they begin their training. So generally in their training, they start off, especially if they started when they were young, like traditionally when they were young, they started off as servants. So their job is to help the geisha get ready. Um, but all good here for the colouring of the education. Awesome. Oh, I try. Um, so the, when they first start their apprenticeship, they basically learn by watching and helping. So they help the geisha get ready and help the, um, Okami-san look after the house, so general household chores and all of that, making sure that kimono are put away properly, that kind of stuff. 
Oh, no, Ezra, 10%. Put it on charge, Miguel. Um, yeah, Memoirs of a Geisha gives you a really good understanding of what Geisha is about. Like, it, it shows that it's actually not about that because that, that perception that um, they're there to provide physical services is, is very wrong. Um, now, once they become geisha, they may, in fact, offer up physical services, but that is their choice. They are not obliged to do that. So they're basically employed to, um, I'm going in with Brown Acre 50 percent. They are basically employed to um, be entertainment. So if you were having a business deal, um, you would hire Geisha to entertain during that business deal or that that kind of thing to show prestige that you can afford to have a geisha present. And generally what the geisha do is they might play the shamisen, which is the long um, three-stringed uh, banjo guitar looking thing. Or they might dance and they perform traditional tree, uh, tea ceremony. Um, but it's all about the act of subtlety with geisha. So the flick of the wrist, all of that kind of stuff, just the actual, it's a very orchestrated, rehearsed movement on how they do everything, how they walk, how they talk. They're also engaged to tell jokes, keep conversation flowing so that the people that are being entertained never feel like they are... Um, being, you know, the, the conversation never gets dull. So they might tell crude jokes, they might um, do things like that, but it's all about entertainment. Yeah, I love listening to, I love Jeff listening to them, um, any of the Jeff, I, I, <laughs> I like the drums. Um, but yeah, so it's a, uh, it's very much a lot of people have a misunderstanding. There are two main geisha districts left in Japan. So there's Kyoto, which is on the um, west, and there's Kanazawa, which is on the east coast. They are the two places now that um, have still have traditional geisha dis districts, um, which is awesome. All right, what do I want to use? Um, might come in with. Sorry, I'm just looking at my looking at my swatches. Where's my dark flesh forty and my dark flesh? Okay, I've got my dark flesh forty. Um, uh, yes, I hope they, um, get your, get it under control for you, Ezra. Yeah. Besi um, it's never fun having skin inflammation. So you can see I'm only working on a small strip of skin at this point in time um, because we will get into the different way they wear their makeup. Um, so maker, so there's there are subtleties that distinguish between maker and geisha. Um, you can't you can't take on the services of mako like you can't have mako. So it needs to be distinguished out on the street or in the district. Who is Mako and who is not Ma um, Who is Geisha? And they have subtle differences differences that allow people to distinguish between Mako and Geisha style, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, um, 
I am I'm lucky. Like I've got sensitive skin, but not enough that it's unbearable. I'm just itchy all the time. And I've got to be careful of what soaps and deodorants and stuff I use. Um, that's all right, Azra. That's why I, I'm just showing while I'm colouring and stuff like that. It's just giving some information while I'm doing it that people might be interested in. Um, it's about, yeah, just awareness of the different cultures around the world and understanding of while it might be very different to what we used to, that it's very steeped in tradition. Um, it, and yeah, I, which and I love, like, you know, it's, and that misunderstood that, yeah, a lot of people think geisha are courtesans, but that is in fact not the truth. Now, some of them end up with in, in a maybe kept in a well provided life by a um, a man, but um, that is by a choice and decision. And um, yeah, it's it's a very interesting thing to watch. But Mako makeup. Okay, so Mako, how do Mako and Geisha differ? in the way that they come through. So I'm coming in now with dark flesh. Um, Mako uh, have to have natural hair. So they have to wear these elaborate hairstyles. Poison cultures while it's, yeah, absolutely. I agree, Sue. It's, it's, and that's why they have to have so much training to be able to do all of that. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to become a geisha. No, you have to learn how to do all of that and how to do it so you don't embarrass um, the mother. Um, oh, that's not good, Ezra. I hope um, your medication relieve some of it so mako have to have natural hair which means that they have those lab these are very elaborate rolls and stuff in their hair doesn't make it uh it takes a long time to do it up and they're not going to do that every day so they do their hair and then they have to sleep on a wooden block so it's kind of like a um anvil looking thing so it keeps their neck up off their tatami and, um, and they sleep on a wooden block so that their hair doesn't get messed up so that it doesn't have to be redone every day. So they have natural hairlines. Sassy, hello. So you can see here with this drawing, it's natural hair. You can see that natural hairline and all of that kind of stuff. When you become geisha, then you have the choice to either wear natural hair or you can wear a wig, which means that you can actually take, keep your hair down and sleep normally without having to sleep on the wooden block, which would be much more preferable, I think. Um, yes, it's very true. Many people do care. And a lot of people understand. Um, Uh, hey, oh, see, now I've got Mona in my head. Hey, Mona, and it's not leaving. So with um, Mako makeup, because they have their natural hairline, it, they actually show their natural hairline with their makeup. 
And you'll see at the back here, I am doing a um, Mako style patterning, which actually is meant to indicate the hairline. So in <coughs> with Mako and Geisha, it's the back of the neck that is appealing. Um, and it's how you show the back of your neck that um, indicates that. And this this style that I'm doing here, it's kind of like an inverted V, is um, synonymous with Mako style. Um, So it's kind of to replicate. Once you become geisha and wear a wig, the wig actually covers this part of the neck, so you don't actually wear your makeup like this. And then a lot of the time, the question is, is why do they wear white makeup? And again, it comes. It's a traditional reason. Um, there was no electricity in, obviously, all the times, and um, the white makeup allows the uh, person to be seen without electricity. So in low light, their face and all shows. So it's actually, it's, it's theatre makeup. It's so that the entertainer can be seen by the um, guests. So that's why they wear that. All right, coming back in with um, Brown Oka. 50%. Oh, they were celebrating. Yeah, I saw that you'd been told to take it down and things like that because they weren't, they were unwell. It's good that you can get them back up. I love having the birds around. Um, and and natural birds and just out doing their thing, singing along. A lot of this will be covered once I start putting hair strokes in, but it's better to have it there than not there. All right, I'm going to go into Carmine Lake. Where are you, Carmine Lake? So Carmine Lake is pretty much um, the luminous version of Kaput Morton, Dead Men's Purple. So I'm going to put this right in here now to give that shadowing. Dead Men Purple would be Kaput Morton. Kaput Morton by be one of my two favourite colours in the Polly's range. I did my tax return last week, and that'll come in the next few weeks. And I'm like, ooh, loomies. Yeah, loomies. It's like, yeah, tax return. Should I be putting it towards my house deposit and stuff? Absolutely. And, you know, go on the dentist and all of that kind of stuff. Sure thing. But... Probably going to buy loomies. Okay, back in with brown oak 10%. I'm going to go over all of this now. Yeah, steroids can be helpful for um, eczema and psoriasis crisis and things like that but some people have an adverse reaction to it and it can oh sorry getting the brush out Evelyn sorry I did that with my hand Evelyn will be like no she didn't I found I found the brush 
found it. I did some tidy up yesterday, and I'm like, there's me brush. Um, oh, yeah, drugs, medication. Um, yeah. I'm lucky steroids don't affect me too much, but they can cause insomnia. That's the problem. And if you already have trouble sleeping, steroids can make that much worse. Oh, blue cranes. Oh, my gosh, that would be. Yeah, salmonella from, yeah, Dirty Feeders. Oh, blue cranes would be amazing. The Australian crane is at what we call is an ibis, um, this kind of thing that we, we have around us a fair bit of the time. Um, we call them bin chickens or dump birds or whatever you want to call them, but they are um, they are our native kind of water bird. I know, Renee. I'm like me too. I and what's even going to be worse is the tax train will come through like in the middle of July, and I've got to let it sit there because I'm like, no, it can wait till August. I can wait. I can be strong. All right, and then going to come in with light flesh. going to sharpen that and the oh yeah the brolga forgot about the brolga yes true i don't see them very often and yet we have a brolga theater like our brolga that we have them around here i just don't see them very often anymore they're a rare thing to see but you see the bin chickens everywhere after july yeah <gasps> they went on the list yep i've got don't get me wrong i've put a few things on the list that i've seen people using they're all on the wood list it's like yep okay but yes I, i've been seeing um corey using the jane davenport watercolors she's been doing a lot of reviews on them All right, I'm going to get, oh, where is it? It's out because I'm using it. Um, do I want four or five? Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Talking to myself. No, I don't want that. I want five. Yeah, August list is going to be huge, I think, for Renee. She'll be like, oh, I need all of this. All right, I'm going in with uh, warm grey five. So, yeah, this one will be a slow going process with this because I want to I don't want to do it justice. So I'm actually taking my time. I know, shock horror. Right. And then I'm going to come in with light flesh. So I'm just slowly building up layers, basically.
Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the same. I'm kind of like, and see paint? I have like lots of paint stuff, but it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't f fill my fill my bucket as well as pencils does. I'm like, kind of like, oh, I've got a set of watercolour paints. That'll do. Um, it's, it's, it's always interesting to the different things that fill different people's buckets. That's what makes it also different and unique. Nice. Yeah, and that's the kind of way to start. It's just starting it with some backgrounds and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, I saw that. I saw you pull out those um, those studio pencils. Oh, and I forgot to comment on that video. No, you may not use your Prismas because they were free for the dollar pencil challenge. No, you may not. That one, no. Whole idea, budget pencils. So you're not getting away with that. Just thought I'd tell you. Trying to find loopholes. I'm like, no. She be not finding the loophole there. Yeah, they might. They were might have been cheap, but they not if you had bought them. They so know. All right, buff titanium. Gonna come in and blend all this together. Putting a little bit more pressure with the buff. I'd be buff. I'd be buff with the buff. So I'm using the buff titanium now more as a burnisher. All right. Now it's time to get on to faceness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Lumis aren't cheap. Okay, this is cold grey two. Because now I'm using an artificial pigment, um, so the makeup, I'm coming into the cold greys. Um, I used a warm grey before because our skin has a nat well, Asian skin especially has a natural yellow undertone yellow red so that's why i use the warm gray in the shadow line but because i'm coming in and using an artificial pigment so white i'm going to switch to the cold grays yeah i know i know i know I was good. You would have seen I was pretty good with those oil pastels that to use a brush because if I'd hand swiped those oil pastels, they definitely would have smudged everywhere. I had someone ask me um, in one of the Facebook groups that I posted to, how did you get all the blending and stuff with the oil pastels? And I went, I don't know, I just went in and smudged it. I don't think that was a very helpful answer to them. It's um, kind of what I did, but... Um, basically the cheapest set you can find. So some people can find like a, a set for $2.50. That's fine. It's, it's just about finding the cheapest set of pencils that you can get. Um, you know, I get that like for me finding that dollar set, I got that dollar set because it was actually on sale. Um, they will probably, I think they're like two, three bucks normally. It's just about cheap budget pencils. That's what the whole idea is. 
So for us here in Australia, Crayola is not our cheap budget set. Um, we pay we pay a lot more for Crayola here. But yeah, it depends on where you are. Yeah, I, I tried making my own watercolours. Um, I don't even know where they are. I think Em's got them. They're okay. But I was just using old makeup <laughs> MAC pigments. Yeah, I just used the MAC pigments to make watercolour. Um, so basically all I'm doing with this cold grey is um, coming in where Aikuko has already put the grayscale. Um, not too much here because I've got other plans there to do with Mako makeup. But I'm just coming in and adding a layer there now just so I've got it down. All right. Now I'm going to come in with. Ow, finger. Yeah, I used, what did I use? I used xanthan gum because I didn't have the Arabic gum. Um, and some glycerin and all of that kind of stuff. This is Col Grey 4. Colouring grey on grayscale. Woohoo! Super exciting for you guys. No worries, you go get more caffeine. Yeah, and I'm lazy. That was the problem. I was kind of like, yeah, that looks kind of blended enough together. <laughs> they worked. <laughs> yeah and that's that's like most of my cheap stuff is at school in the, my um all the pets cases i have in my cupboard um it's where they end up because whilst yes you could do it was it fun no my hand very much hurt after doing that dollar pencil challenge Definitely knew I'd been working with trying to get the pigment out and layering. Oh, my God, the layering that it required to even have it so it looked like there was pigment on the page. Like, you yeah, know. All right. Going to come in with the Buffus Titanium. Good night, Azra. Thank you for popping in. Look after yourself. Now I'm using buff titanium as well because I don't, whilst I want her skin to be white, I don't want it to be unbearably white, if that makes sense. And the skin tone is naturally going to kind of peek on through the white powder. So 
So I'm doing some buffus titanium underneath. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair enough, um, Jamie. I wouldn't be doing it. You have enough issues. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for anyone that has um, arthritis, fibro, all of that kind of stuff. And then lo and behold, Shannon does it with her fibro. I'm like, man, it must have been killing after that. I promise there is pigment coming down on this page, just so you know. <laughs> you just can't see it. That was like, because I'm saying, I was thinking, do I do Mako? And then I'm like, it's going to be, I'm colouring white on white paper. And I'll be like, they'll probably be thinking I'm just using invisible pencils. Oh, that could be a challenge, using invisible pencils. Okay, now I need to think about colour. All right, where's my polys? Because I don't have all of the luminance yet, so I'm going to have to pull out some from the polars. Polar, polar, ooh, polar. Oh, my God, stop. It's out of, in my head. Get the song out of my head. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very smooth, but not smooth. But you feel it and it feels smooth. But then you put the pencil on it and it's not. I know that's really helpful. Um, I want a red-pink. All right, let's go Rose Carmine. Where are you? Rose. Oh, look, I pulled it straight out. I love when that happens. All right, Rose Carmine. Okay, Mako makeup. They wear a lot more pink red than Geisha do. Geisha wear a little bit more understated makeup, um, but Mako wear... Uh, pink cheeks and a bit more red around the eyes to show their youth. Whereas geisha wear less to show their sophistication and their maturity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I thought you would. It's like smooth as but it it's certainly it's it's interesting and i was i'm like i'm gonna try this paper because i heard you talking about it, and i'm like i'm gonna give this a go and see how 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 it works So they bring their makeup into their um, eyebrows as well. So when we come back and do the eyebrows, we'll go over that. But I want the pink down so that it's there when I do the eyebrows. Oh, okay, yeah. See, I, and that's it. I'm a toothy paper girl. I like toothy paper. Um, 
So this, yeah, smooth paper is always requires a little bit more thought on my part. I have to really think about how I'm going to layer and so forth. All right. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, I know you like smoother paper because everyone talks about the, what is it, the nina nina or whatever and how smooth it is. And I'm like, nah, give me some tan tone. Yes, that's how I, I feel the same way, Angie. Same like when you're saying, oh, it's not working out. And I'm like, yeah, but that's because you're like, you know, a little bit harsh on yourselves. All right, I'm going to come in with pink carmine. Just in those areas, I want to be a little bit more pinky. Yeah, like even tooth rather than like not so even. I get that. I kind of like that too. I, I'm not a huge fan of. I've got some some pastel pa papers and stuff. They're just their tooth's all over the place, and you're like, that's really annoying. Hey, Beth, how's it going? How's Texas? Feels weird colouring pink eyebrows. It's all hot and sweaty. Oh, here I am with gloves on my hand. Pages never turn out for me the way I think in my head. I just go, oh, well, this is how it's going to be. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Yes. We'll be less harsh on ourselves and just go, eh, it is what it is. Otherwise, I'd never post anything. Because I always look at it and go, oh, I should have done this better. I should have done this better. I could have done this. Um, the significance of the fish. So fish um, in Japan are all about prosperity and wealth. And um, so it's, it's basically about, yeah, showing good luck for future because fish continue to swim upstream all right sorry I, was, I didn't tell you i'm going in with a lizard and crimson now um, we're gonna start working a little bit more on the red part of her makeup and different colored fish have different meanings i don't know the meanings off the top of my head to be able to tell you i think red is for persistence pink is for motherhood but i honestly i can't remember them all off the top of my head what the the different colors for the fish mean but there is there is a meaning for the different colors too
This takes the the meaning of pink eye to a whole new level. Red is actually the fa my favorite eyeshadow color to wear. Just like it's my favorite lipstick to wear. Um, I love wearing red eyeshadow because I've got blue eyes, and if I wear red eyeshadow, it's like bam bam. Blue eyes, you be. Yeah, and just that it, that's how I feel about it, Renee, too. I, um, yeah, <clears throat> I, it's kind of, that's it. Just let it be fun. Um, let it tell you where she's going to go. I'm like, meh. Sorry, I'm kind of half concentrating now. You can always tell when I'm concentrating because I get quieter. Um, oh, yeah, there are some that I've just gone, nope. She not being getting talked about. But I also am like, you know, I'm going straight into the book with this. I'm like, it is what it is. It's a learning process. And then sometimes I'm really crazy and come on stream and try things that I've never done before for you to watch my complete mess ups. All right. And need just one more deeper red. Oh, excuse me. I apologize for that. Um. Yeah, well, I'm actually going to do, Jamie, I'm going to do, I'm going to film it. I'm going to do that, the water wheel in ink tents. But, yes. But I liked that you did that, Evelyn, because it shows, like, I like those videos where people are doing things for the first time because it, it shows the thought process and the learning that people are doing. So this is deep red in the polys. Yes, and it depends on which way the fish are. <laughs> you don't have to. Oh, actually, yeah, you're going to colour along with it. Yes, you're going to apply makeup, Jamie. Good luck with that. Um, the, like, the koi, especially koi fish, depending on whether they're pointing up or pointing down, will also represent that you've overcome that or you're achieving for it or you're striving for it. Um, there's there's so much meaning behind most of the 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 symbol symbolism. Now, remembering most of this this in the eyebrow is going to get covered up in a second. It's just there because they actually put it through their brow as well. Be a challenge for you, Jamie. Makeup, makeup. All right, I'm going to come back in with pink carmine. Just blend out the red that I've done. Looks pretty good. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just looking up and I'm like, oh. 
every now and again I have to look up and look at the what you guys see just so I can tell myself I'm not completely messing this up. All right, have a look at this pretty page while I go get the girls up. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Georgia, come get up. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, that's it. All right, coming back in with the lighter pink, which is the rose carmine. <laughs> I actually don't have red shoes on at the moment. I should wear my red boots. Red boots are my – I've got a pair of red boots, and they're my favourite boots. Hey, Raina. Real boots. Oh, because <laughs> I do own red boots. And I'm like, how do you know what colour boots I'm wearing? Yes, I do actually have real boots on. I'm actually dressed. I'm, I've got to go out after this. So I'm like. But I have Harry Potter socks on underneath it, just so you know. Not everything's fancy. <laughs> Hello, Winchester. How are you, my darling boy? Okay, let's come back in with white now. Oh, look at this. Angie's gone red. Yeah. yeah there we go. See, I was doing all right. I kind of remembered it all right. All right, coming in with white now. Again, you won't be able to see any of this. There you go. I knew that gold, orange stuff was well. There you go. Interesting. The yin, the yang, your dragon. Yeah. There's lots of, like nearly everything has symbolism there. The fox, the deer, the wolf. Any problem doing white, any little marks that get on the page, be annoying. Oh, and then I come in with a dirty eraser. Oh, my gosh. It might be a mole. Might end up as that.
You might not be able to see, but there is actually colour here. The circle of does has a yin yang page, I have noticed, and it's yin yang with koi, I believe. <laughs> yeah, no, I know you guys can't see the mark, so it's good. I can, and it's going to irritate me. But that's all right. The good thing about using white is like, I'm like, well, you can't see what I'm doing anyway. So I'm colouring with wild abandon. Actually, what I have done is I've let the um, tip get a blunt edge on it um, so that I can... use large circular strokes and use it to burnish out. Oh, another one for Sun and the Moon. Yeah, I've got to remember it. I knew exactly what you're talking about. Um, <clears throat> when you said the water wheel, I was like, oh, yeah, I like that one. I'm like, where is it? Oh. Yeah, so there's the sun and the moon one, that one, and I think there's the, the koi kind of yin-yang. So lotus means rebirth, coming from the mud, the depth, and rising out and being beautiful. And then you've got your koi going in different directions. All right. How's she be looking? You're like, yep, yeah, she looks like didn't see you do anything. But I did, I promise. Did you go to Australia to me? Really? That's funny. That is quite funny. All right. I'm just going to use that white just to blend out. Um, my grey shadow line too, but I wanted to have that there to kind of show you where it would connect. Well, that there was a distinct line. Okay. All right, we're, we're eyebrows. Let's do that before we do anything else because she'll irritate me with no eyebrows. It's coming in with black. And as you could imagine, the eyebrows are quite drawn on because they've put a whole lot of white on their face. Hey. Hey. Um, was the sausage roll maker supposed to be on? No. Well, it was on. All night. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, I left the sausage roll maker on all night. Oopsies. Lucky the house hasn't burnt down.
Have I started the water wheel? Not yet. It's there. I will. Um, I know what I'm, I'm going to use ink tents on it, but no, I haven't started it yet. But I was looking at it last night. Does that count? <laughs> I was looking at it. That kind of counts, doesn't it? I'm just going to come in with a little bit of the white now. Because the white makeup will peek. Oh, I nearly, I nearly used my hand. The white makeup will peek through the eyebrow. All right. Okay. Let's finish off our eyeballs. Let's come in with cold grey too. Right. Now. Sorry, I'm just looking at my, my chart. Um. All right, let's use that. Do I already have them out? Sorry, I'm just looking at my colours. Dark sepia. Walnut brown. Burnt sienna. Okay. We went through your channel. Oh, lovely. Okay, so I'm going to come in with Burnt Sienna. Then Walnut Brown. Ooh, Virgin River. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to keep my whips under control. I've got one in Sherry Baldy. I've got to start the one in. I've got an ongoing one with Angie in the Thomas Kincaid. I might get back to that at some point. And then I've got dark sepia. Um, And then I've got obviously got that snow globe from Joanna's Bassfords that I'll work on. Um, I think. I'm going to run this dark sepia. In here. I love dark sepia. It's such a good brown grey. Yeah, I know. I don't think there's any hurry on <laughs> on the um the Tumpus King Kate. I think we're both kind of like, we'll get there at some point.
So it's a little bitty, itty bitty area. So I'm really trying to. <gasps> I know, Angie, but you've been spreadsheeting. You've been in spreadsheet land. All right, coming back in with that um, cold grey two. And then a little bit of cold grey four. So I'm just moving my pencils from around here because I've got like a million pencils out now. All right. Ah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, and I'm the same, Jamie. Like some days I just don't want to. I'm like, I just don't want to today, and that's fine. I usually find something else to do, um, other projects and stuff. I won't be colouring much in the next month or so because I've got heaps of prop set stuff to do. All right, coming in with black. So it, it definitely won't be as much as I normally do because I've got to actually do other arty stuff. Um, I'm not going long with the lashes because um, Asian lashes are not that long. They're quite straight and short. So I'm not being too crazy with lashes. All righty. How does that look? Yeah, let's think about Maybe giving her some hair and she might not look quite so scary. Oh, yeah, I've got, oh, we won't talk about my diamond painting. I've got, like, one going, the finger of ages and five million in the queue. So I feel you. Thanks, Mona. All right. Um, which one do I want to use? Okay. Let's come in and get some hair going. So I'm going to come in with light ultramarine. Now, here I've just got to be a little bit cautious because some of this is fishtail. So it's just about identifying which part is which. But I'm actually going to do the fish so it melds into her hair. So that was my plan. So it kind of looks a little bit meldy. <laughs> meldy, that's a good terminology there. I'm just going to go over and base the whole thing in this light ultramarine. I'm using blue one because Asian hair is generally a blue black, but also because I'm going to do the kimono blue. I'm going to do it like a bright um, 
blue. So I want her hair to have a blue undertone as well. Yes, little miniatures. I'm like, no, I don't need another thing that I should can start on and not finish. I'm like, no, stay out of that. I'm trying. I'm trying, people. I've got some wood cam wood panels downstairs because I wanted to do the string um, mandala with all the nails. One day I've got all of the thread. Yeah, just need to find the time. That's it too. And I'm like, oh, patience, patience for that. And my big, big, clumsy man hands, I'd be dropping things left, right and centre. funny and you know makeup like I was contemplating just doing her natural because there is absolutely nothing wrong with that um you know the majority of general young girls that go out um in celebration like at festivals for um and wear kimono and and the hair embellishments and stuff they are wearing a lot of makeup so natural is fine it was just that I thought well, I might talk about Mako and Geisha, so that's why I kind of decided to do Mako. Um, that was the the only reason. Um, otherwise, I would have kept a natural too. All right, so she's got light ultramarine down. All right, Erin in. Indenthrinine blue. So now I'm going to start coming in and flicking. And I will, you'll see me occasionally um, turn my pencil as I'm doing this, and that's just to keep the point there. Oh, thank you. Um, hopefully once I put like a background and stuff, the the white um, base won't look quite so um, out of place. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Evelyn, it's a bit hard. Um, you'll always know that I'm kind of colouring or doing something if I'm in a stream, but I'm not super chatty. 
means I'm actually kind of half listening, half watching, but my main focus is on um, thing. But it, yeah, it's like getting, re- getting, because you're going to start streaming. Just so you know, everyone, everyone's going to start streaming soon. Um, it is, it is something to be conscious of. Like I've got to remind myself to look up every now and again and look at the chat. Um, otherwise I'm like oblivious. <laughs> and especially when I'm doing something like this that requires concentration. Um, I've got to be really mindful of what I'm doing. So, what is everyone's favourite hair colour to colour? Is there anyone that has a particular one? I actually legitimately love doing black hair. It would be one of my favourite ones to colour. Let's go in and just sharpen this again. Red hair, nice. Like red, red, like ginger red or dark organ red. No worries. Joy dinner, Beth. Yeah, absolutely. There are some images where I really want to do credit to the artist. So I take, I find myself working so much slower because of that. So I'm like, I want to do my absolute bed. Oh, your black Lamy is not happy. <laughs> That's funny. Medium red, yep, nice. I also don't mind blonde hair. The blonde hair is such a challenge just to get it that just right, just right. <laughs> blonde is a lot more grey. Um, it depends what kind of blonde you're going for too. Um, it's, a, it's a tough one, blonde. So you'll see here that occasionally I'm bringing the this blue all the way through and sometimes I'm leaving it so the highlight's there. And that's because hair naturally folds and um, has sections. Hey, glowy blonde, not a problem with that. There was lots of different bronze. You just say it's she, it was before she got some purple shampoo. But that, just like brown hair, like there's so many different variations of it. Like for myself, I have like my my blonde hair is a dark golden blonde with a um, a bit of a red tinge. Um, so it really just depends. Like there's so many different variations there. 
So I'm just looking a bit closely to see where the colour is here for the, the hair. Okay. Duck indigo. Most like it. Yeah, I, I'm starting to get the greys come through, which is why I'm um, growing out my hair colour, like all the dyes and stuff, and going natural. Because I'm like, well, I'm blonde hair, so I might as well let the white grey be natural highlights. So that is, that's my plan. So I'm like just zoning. I find colouring hair quite cathartic because it's just like flick 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 flick. It's kind of like I just zone out. But you notice I'm doing black hair and I still haven't come in with black yet. But she's starting, you can even start to see that it's meant to be black hair. Ooh, a warrior purple. Nice. Someone's having toast. I can smell it. Oh, smells good. I'm zoned out. Yeah, it's all right. I'm zoned out doing it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I dyed my hair grey a few years ago, and that's where I'm like, man, I, I actually paid a fortune to go grey a few years ago. I'm like, no, I'm just going to go grey. But my uncle did that. He went he went grey at 19, went full grey. And I always thought he looked so cool because he, he was young and had grey hair. And, you know, yeah, being blonde means that I'm most likely going to be a white, go white blonde. And I love white blonde, uh, white grey, I mean. Love that colour. I'm like, oh, well. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's the same thing. But, um, yeah, someone's eating toast out there. 
Although, who knows, I could be connected via virtual plane and be like, mm, I smell toast. Rana's eating toast and I know it. Oh, strawberry blonde. Yeah. 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 So that's what I'm hoping because, and my dad's done the same thing. Like he, he's got dark golden blonde hair too with a bit of a red tinge and he's gone white gray. So, and you never really notice when blondes grow, go gray. I think because it's such a natural transition, it's kind of just, it just happens. Like I'm sure at one minute my dad was blonde and the next minute I noticed he was gray. And I was like, oh, when did that happen? Whereas my mum, she has nearly black hair because um, of her heritage and she still dyes her hair because it just, it looks weird grey because it doesn't suit her because she's always had such dark hair. So, yeah, it's, it's always interesting. All right. You are not horror. I think you're beautiful, Evelyn. All right. Um, coming in with black now, finally. Oh, stuff that up. Hold on. All right, I'm going to turn my book for this one. Sorry, I can't get the angle right. Coming back around. Okay. Oh, you will be fine, Jamie. Mind you, I'm 40. What? I'm what? 43. I tried to think about how old I was then. And, yeah, the greys, I definitely noticed the greys coming through a lot more in the last couple of years. I used to boast, yeah, I'm 40 and I've got no greys. Um, they've come through quick. Not a lot. At the moment, they're just highlights. But yeah, that's why I went and got my hair cut short and everything. So it was just easier to do that. Just, who knows what's on my desk? I just stood on something. Nice golden white. Whoa, that'd be lovely. 50 and no grey. Oh gosh. Those boys have been too good to you then, Renee. I might have to have a chat to them so that they give you more grey. something there sorry i'm just it's like the princess and the pea we feel something underneath the page there Till after his 70th birthday, wow. That is awesome.
much. Here <laughs> in Winchester running up the whole line. Who paid a pat? Wow. Yeah, like that's the same as my dad. My dad is like a, a lighter blonde than I am. Um, and yeah, his, his was kind of like, I just, he was always blonde. And the next minute I like look at him and I'm like, wait up. No, you're not. You're actually gray. Interesting. But, some, but sometimes there's just the recessive gene there for the baldness that, because baldness is recessive. Um, but, you know, it's just, it was laying there between the two sides and then lo and behold, it pops on through. So I should be able to get this hair done before I go. Which is good because then next week will be kimono and embellishments. <clears throat> Nearly 1 a.m. Whoa. Oh, you're back. You've charged your phone. <laughs> Oil treatment. Ugh. Uh, are you using like um, hemp oil or rosehip oil? Actually, to be honest, nothing like good macadamia olive oil for skin too. And almond oil, they're good. I use almond oil a lot in my massage oils. Shea butter. Okay, yep. I like the little speed colorings you've been doing too, Azra. Ah, it burns his hair up. I like it. <laughs> ah. Radio. I like that one. That's a good one. I haven't heard that one before. I like that. All right, I've got to turn my book again. Sorry.
right, come back around. Crazy weather. Crazy. I think because I'm left-handed, I like to flick away. I know some people like to flick inwards. I think it, it's about like the curvature of the way you hold your pencil and how you naturally work. But, yeah, I like flicking away. Um, flick it away. Are you a flicker inner or a flicker outer? <coughs> No, see, I am slightly a contortionist. That's the, that's the thing. Being a left handy in a right handed world, I've learned to be able to, and I have super crazy, ridiculous, bendy hands. But there's certain times when I, I, I it's just I need to turn the page. The reason I don't turn it more is just laziness. To be honest. It's always laziness. Everything I do is about laziness, just so you guys know. There's no usually any other reason apart from laziness. How are we looking? All right, five minutes to get this top bit. Ooh, top bit done. I think Sarah might be on later. Um, I saw Ryan from Colour and Recover is doing a, a live stream later too, so there should be a few coming up. Uh, yeah, well, Jane, like, I'm not, I don't turn it a lot, and I think you guys have seen that. I'm not, I don't turn it a huge amount, but sometimes I just have to. Um, and it, it it really does depend what I'm colouring and it depends on how I'm going to smudge it because I rest, like I, I'm not, I don't colour up and I rest it so much. I am conscious of trying not to smudge a lot of the time and it depends what pencils I'm using and how much they smudge and what, or what other media and stuff depends, depends on how much I turn my page. Like that oil pastel I did on... Um, Friday night, I was turning that page left, right and centre because it was smudgy. Oh, no. Oh, I'm not going to rush it. I'm just getting the, the hair will be done. I need to pull out a little pencil extender for this little fellow. Little nubbin he's becoming.
Thank you, Jamie. Thanks, Ezra. Right, I'm going to come in with a little bit of that light ultramarine now. Well, I think I need a little bit more black in here. And a little bit more of the Arendaphone blue. Might have missed this bit, I think, in my flicking. Oh, sorry. I've already got I've already got the replacement color. <laughs> as long as it looks good to you, it doesn't matter. What it's all about is how it looks to you, not to anyone else. All right, what do you think? She look okay? She look all right? <laughs> yes, Evan, we, yeah. I don't know, I'm not that bad. I've got backups of black, cream, ivory, and white because they're the ones that I tend to use the most. Alrighty, so when we come back next time round, we'll probably start working on kimono and then the fishies. Um, so that that is the where we've gotten to with her. Um, and I think I'm going to leave it there so I can head off to the um, land of rehearsals um, so that I can... Go sing some Cinderella. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Bye, guys. Have a great um, day, evening, and I will catch you around during the week. Thank you very much for joining. Bye.